Well, Dad, what's going on? Well, we're sitting here opening boxes. Opening pretty boxes. And besides that box, we have a challenge issued by our good friend William at Charger 383 Mopar. I'm saying you ain't even adhered to it yet because I have as best as I can. You know, it never fails. Someone wants to give me a challenge and I just trim my mustache. William's challenge is the handlebar mustache challenge. Dude was straight up. He just got his motorhome 440 run on his engine stand. And I've been talking with him back and forth about the engine stand, you know, and getting this turboed 440 running. Took all the turbo stuff off. And I'll be a yeah, going, uh, I don't even know what words I can use here for, you know, safe YouTube usage, but I'll be damned if he didn't pop that video looking dapper as a, I can't use half the words I want to, <laughs> but he looked damn dapper. Let me tell you, he had his handlebar, he had his mustache curled all the way up by touching his nostrils. It was pretty cool. And I had literally right before, right, like the night before I had just trimmed the tails of my mustache off. Michael had just trimmed his entire facial hair down to like baby face and dad's facial hair just don't do that Of course he ain't tried. I think he's scared. No, it ain't very long. I just trimmed it this morning to tell you the truth Yeah, William you picked the worst time to do this, but I don't know if mine's still holding. I don't have mustache wax I have hair gel from when I was 17 still <laughs> It's so, starting to fall out. Is it? Yeah, so that's the best I can come up with you know, maybe down the road I'll grow the facial hair out and then redo the challenge. But yeah, <laughs> handlebar mustache challenge. That's actually kind of fun. Yep. It's kind of fun just sitting there trying to do it. It gives you an appreciation for the guys who really do rock the handlebars every day. Yep. And we actually have a friend here in town who does that every single day. His mustache comes all the way down to here and he's got big old curl loops. <laughs> also drives a shortened 57 Chevy. Like it's super cool. So, so as far as the mustache thing goes, I'm challenging you guys of battery productions because I know they all watch this and I know they all have epic mustache, including especially J Bo. Dude's got a freaking walrus stash. <laughs> we need Blake, Jeremy, and J Bo, and anybody else who's in that video in the video when you guys do the challenge. We want full on handlebar because I know all three of you guys mainly can all grow much thicker, more manly mustaches than myself. Get on that in your next video. And we're just, it's the new challenge. No burnouts, nothing like that. We're just being silly, having fun. Now on to what we're really doing in the video. Hang on. Okay, it feels better. <laughs> There's something wrong about combing my mustache against the grain. So, <clears throat> what do we got here, Dad? Oh, we got a packages from Ram Clutches. Yep, so anybody who's on the community tab on YouTube, which is real easy to navigate to, McLeod basically throwing the blame at everybody but themselves and after much deliberating and thinking about it and talking with friends and even Ram and McLeod <coughs> like I said friends the clutch that was in Jezebel should have never been in the car and Ram and not Ram but McLeod are the ones who specked out that clutch Jezebel had a Super Street Pro and when you look it up that clutch is only rated for 550 horsepower and <coughs> I mean, I I can put the video, the photos in here, but you can physically see where the pressure plate was tearing itself off the flywheel, and it's just, and it wasn't. And I, I originally had thought maybe the hydraulic throat bearing was the problem, but the problem was that when this pressure plate was starting to tear itself free, and albeit the bolts were Loctited and torqued down to spec, McLeod specs, that the fingers and all the springs failed. And that's what caused the hydraulic throwout bearing to overextend. It wasn't what I originally thought. Where I had thought, you know, it was my fault for putting the bigger bore master and I was pushing the hydraulic throwout bearing further. Well, that should have failed a lot sooner. So with all this coming to light, <coughs> it's really just the McLeod clutch or pressure plate that failed. We yeah, it ripped the steel out of the pressure plate. Yeah. It's, two, it's, of the two of the bolt holes are completely ripped open. Other two are elongated and the other two are still intact. <coughs> and then one of the spring plates is physically bent up at a 45 degree angle yep, yep, yep. and the clutch disc was it handled it but the pressure plate could not and as far as people who need to know this <clears throat> when you run a hydraulic throat bearing you have to run a diaphragm clutch you cannot run a Borgenbeck or three finger style disc and it's because hydraulic throat bearing 
<clears throat> to operate properly, it needs to be on, you know, an equal surface. It can't be on three points. They prefer it to be all the way around this, like hub centric almost. So <clears throat> that's out of the way. So after talking to McLeod, being absolutely disgusted, I mean, I talked to two different guys there, and I mean, being a guy who buys and sells stuff for a living, I understand customer service, and that is the most important thing, that's why I'm so loyal to Jags. I used to think Doug's headers had like horrible customer service over our early A-body headers I got that were damaged beyond using, <coughs> um, and McLeod takes that cake hard 100%. Even when you want to buy stuff, they're not so friendly. So we said, screw it. Um, Jegs carry center force, which is way too expensive. McLeod and Ram. So we called Ram, <coughs> me and a buddy actually. And uh, we we're very happy with Mike at Ram. Uh, not only was he helpful, <coughs> he wasn't being super biased. He just made sure we got the best stuff we could get. And uh, super happy with Mike at Ram. Oh, and by the way, McLeod, if you ever see this video, <coughs> You had three RST dual disc clutches on order from us, and you lost all three of those. And all three of those went to Ram. Because Buddy Billy went with who we went with. Mm -hmm. And he was pushing for Ram, so... What do you say, Dad? Should we show off one of the lightweight billet steel flywheels, or do we move on to the actual gravy, the good stuff? <laughs> the good stuff. The good stuff? Yeah, because this is the flywheel. The flywheel. <laughs> yeah, but that's the part number we got. 8 bolt, 30 pound flywheel, 143 tooth, 11 inch. <clears throat> so, and Dad got the Concept 10.5 dual disc, 23 spline, part number 50-2350. I got the Concept 10.5 dual disc, 900 series, 18 spline, 143 tooth. Dad has the 300 series disc. And we're going to show you what the difference is between those two materials. So we'll open up dad's we'll open up this and there is a considerable price difference here so keep that in mind everybody so i ain't got light on mine that kind of that kind of sucks hang on let's reposition all right so first off both boxes by the way these are very big boxes and quite heavy so that will probably get red we'll put yours over there and we have looked at dad's already but look at that look at that disc look at that daggone disc so a 300 series is full organic it try not to touch that so that's a fully organic this is the non-sprung hub there's one sprung hub and then there's a non-sprung hub and you come over to mine and the 900 series is a semi-metallic puck style like what was in jezebel so but mike at ram highly recommended if i'm going to drag race this car at all to get the semi-metallic puck style that's actually semi-metallic on both sides jezebel's was a dual friction deal where semi-metallic on one side and organic on the other mm -hmm. my non-sprung hub is not like that so and you remove more and you just got the most awesome bitchin' magenta color in the world <laughs> and i will say this when i first got my mcleod clutches they had they were bright red you know of course pretty red but they had runs in the paint everywhere these i don't see any runs and i know it's just a small thing but i mean it's the little stuff that matters to me you know if they put runs in their paint clearly how much do they really care they come with lineup tools, of course, you know, the plastic ones. How much do you really trust those? Well, Dad, are you feeling froggy? Huh. How, how froggy are you feeling? It's all put together? Yeah. Loosely assembled. Look at that. Now, what also separates these clutches from, say, McLeod's RST or RXT is McLeod's is only 9 and 11 sixteenths of an inch, which is just north of, it's 9.6 inches diameter clutch disc. The Rams are actually a full 10 and a half inch clutch disc set up. And you got two of them. 
And of course, the RST and RXT are also dual disc setups. Man, they got mine all for I can't see mine. <laughs> it's semi metallic. Yeah. They don't want it to rub. It's true. That's fair. That's why yours ain't probably coated with wax paper. But I mean, they come with all the hardware, nice stuff. I'm pretty happy with it, even for the. It's expensive. I mean, this stuff is really expensive. All right. Basically, what's sitting on the counter here is what I paid for Jezebel initially when I first bought the car. Ooh, don't let that box fall. So that's what it looked like. Yep. That's exactly how it goes together because your sprung hub goes in the back, I believe. Or no, no. <coughs> uh, there's videos on it. I'm not going to lie. <coughs> but yeah. Well, I've got it folded together, that other one. Yeah. But yeah, so you have this adapter ring, and that bolts to your flywheel, and then you assemble everything as per what they want. They have inspection, they have instructions and everything that tells you how to do it. That's what this it's actually a pretty thick book here on installing it and don't be a moron. But yeah, this stuff's beautiful. Yeah, it comes with a bolt. Yeah, older bolt. Yep. But well, Dad, what do you guys say about your ram clutch? Well, yeah, I just gotta get time to put it together. Yeah. I got 18 or 23 spine, so I guess it'll hope be all right behind my hemi. Yeah, it'll be fine. And I got the 18 just maybe because all my stuff's already 18. I don't drive like a scalded ass dog. No. I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon either. <laughs> I think my days of driving like a scalded ass dog is going to wait until at least after 500 break in miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they got a front and a back. No, it's the same on both sides. Yeah, yeah flywheel, flywheel side. side. Yeah. Flywheel side. So that does go flywheel. Yeah. And then that. And that. So, yeah. Real happy with these clutches. This is who I'll be recommending as long as nothing goes wrong with this. But just based off customer service alone, I'll spend the extra dollars and go with Ram just on that for that reason. So as long as you're happy, Dad, that's all that matters. I'm happy. Stop reading. You can uh, read that later. Use of an aftermarket hydraulic bearing. You use it there. It's just got all kinds of instructions here. Yeah, we'll read those. So... Well, don't forget, guys, a bad tree. You have a mustache challenge to complete. I know you guys ain't got no excuses because y'all got some really thick, hairy mustache. Y'all got caterpillars on your face. So, I expect to see a response from this challenge. And, well, hopefully soon we'll get that A33 rebuild video coming out. I still got to take it out to a buddy's place and we still got to delve into it. So, that video's coming. Don't worry about it. And uh, hopefully soon, before snow hits the ground, we'll have Jezebel back on the road. So, I want to thank you guys for always checking it out. And want to thank Ram for being cool. They did not give us a price discount, by the way. Did not ask. But I'm sure if we would have asked, we probably could have got it. But we didn't. But, just want to thank Ram for being cool. And say McLeod that they can uh, pound sand. And uh, thanks for making me tear my car apart again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well... Just want to thank you guys for checking it out. So, like always, we'll see you in the next one. So, take care and bye bye. Bye bye.